Well, hi everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor over at Bloomer Boomer. Now, it was a little over three years ago that I met and interviewed today's guest, Greg O'Brien, here at Bloomer Boomer. That was around the time of the release of his first book on Pluto, Inside the Mind of Alzheimer's. Now, he has a second edition of that book written with the same grace and humor and profound insight on Pluto as an intimate look inside the mind of this journalist diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Now his book has won international uh, book awards. It was the focus of a, a film called a, a Place Called Pluto. NPR's All Things Considered has run a, a series about his journey and PBS Nova followed the Pluto journey in a groundbreaking documentary. Can Alzheimer's be stopped from the front lines of his own battlefield in a, a moment we'll meet and talk to Greg O'Brien and his book on Pluto, Inside the Mind of Alzheimer's. Here we go. Well, our guest is Greg O'Brien and his book on Pluto, Inside the Mind of Alzheimer's. Greg, I want to thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you know, Greg, the, the last time uh, we sat down for an interview with me was late 2014. Now, can you give us an yeah, I, You had mentioned that and I told you, don't take this personally, I don't remember, but that's okay. So <laughs> this is like a new experience for me. Well, that's, that's a good thing, I think. Um, and uh, and uh, you've done so many interviews and so many things. No matter what, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't remember me. But, but can you kind of give us a, an update as to, to where you're at today? Yeah, the, first of all, the, <clears throat> there's a stereotype of Alzheimer's that's not true. And anyone, the doctors will be the first to tell you that, the experts. Uh, people think of it as being 85, 90 years old in, in, in a nursing home and, um, and, and, and you've lost continence. And, um, but this is a journey that can take 20 to 25 years to run its course uh, once you're diagnosed. And the doctors now say that um, the pathology could start when people are in their 40s. And, and so it, 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 until we understand that um, there are millions and millions of people uh, who can communicate just like me, who uh, are, are walking around with these symptoms, it's like losing a sliver of your brain every day. And it's, it's a slow death. Today, 60% of my short-term memory can be gone, not always, but can be gone in 30 seconds. 70% uh, uh, of the time, if I'm in an area now, this has changed since our last interview, uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm seeing someone that I didn't expect to see in a place where I don't expect to see them, I won't have a clue who they are. They'll have to introduce themselves. I'm dealing with tremendous additional rage, uh, loss of filter, loss of judge. Um, there are uh, my, I have no feeling now from my, uh, my feet to my knees and both legs. Uh, <clears throat> the, the brain controls your thought process, but it also is the, uh, um, uh, the control panel for your body and it slowly breaks your body down. And uh, <clears throat> my body is slowly breaking down um, you can hear some rasp in my voice. I'm just getting over, <coughs> excuse me, pneumonia again. Um, uh, and that's, that's a, that's a continual breakdown. Um, again, the, the feeling in, in, from no feeling from my feet to my knees, uh, it is neuropathy, but it's complicated by brain signals, not being transmitted. Um, the, uh, uh, I have a severe spinal stenosis and scoliosis and just was uh, diagnosed uh, with slowly losing my sight, macular degeneration, which the doctors now say there, uh, the, the uh, researchers now say there could be a connection between um, the brain and the eye. And, and in fact, there are some um, researchers now who are looking at ways of detecting Alzheimer's by looking into the eye. So it's um, Stephen King uh, um, couldn't have, have uh, designed a, a better plot. You know, I can get up for an interview with you, but you know, my, my battery is a short term battery. And, and after a while I drift out to Pluto and sure I can, I can carry a conversation for a little bit, but more and more after that, I got to take a break. I'm withdrawing. I can't be around a lot of people anymore. I'm not allowed to drive. So it is what it is. I have a strong faith and, um, 
I don't know how anyone gets through this without faith, hope, and humor. And indeed, some of the indeed. That you, now, you describe like. you describe how you had a front row seat with Alzheimer's as both your maternal grandmother and your mother died from it. Uh, what we know today, and I, I guess you must uh, have suspected that you could likely uh, follow a similar road. Yeah. Well, my maternal grandfather died of Alzheimer's. My mother died of Alzheimer's. My paternal uncle died of Alzheimer's, and before my father died, he too was diagnosed with uh, dementia. So I had a front row seat, was diagnosed several years ago after two serious head injuries. The doctor said, traumatic head injuries, I wasn't supposed to walk away from. The doctor said, unmask the disease in the making, and, and, and I also uh, carry the gene APOE4. And I just forgot your question, Andrew. Can well, you ask me that? Well, I, I, uh, you had uh, had inheritance of of, uh, of Alzheimer's, uh, and uh, that was what I was uh, talking to you about. But but I also wanted to talk to you about living with Alzheimer's. You know, and, and it's living with Alzheimer's and not dying from Alzheimer's, and that's an, an important distinction I think for all of us to understand. Well, what what, what I'm trying to do um, in my book on Pluto inside the mind of Alzheimer's and, and, and in talking to people is, first of all, to uh, to get more people to talk about this. Um, there are millions of people who are afraid to talk about it. We didn't talk about cancer a generation ago. We didn't talk about AIDS. We need to start to talk about this because there is no cure right now and it's going to be a while. So people have to learn to, to live with this demon. And I believe you can in faith, hope and humor while the doctors uh, work and the experts to, to find a cure. And um, and also on this, in addition, in addition to stressing the faith and the hope is, is the humor. Uh, laughter is good for the soul. And um, we need to get more and more people talking about this because then more and more people will realize there's a critical mass out there. And then let's look at our, grand, our, our children and our grandchildren. They're, they're at risk. They say in short time to come, before maybe the end of this generation, there'll be two types of people in the world, those with Alzheimer's and those caring for someone with the disease. Yeah. You know, and that's really what frustrates me, um, that medical science has not uh, been able to make uh, greater progress in understanding the disease and getting closer to a cure. Uh, what are you seeing that might lend some some hope? And and, and I think, um, you know, you mentioned humor, right? that that helps in a lot of things. But as far as medical science and the possibility of improvements, are you seeing anything out there? I have the greatest respect for um, the experts in pharmaceuticals, but this is such a complicated disease. Um, I also have cancer too, and I'm not treating it. And um, but, but Alzheimer's is in a different class of its own because there are no two types of Alzheimer's are like snowflakes that are the same. Everyone's path is different. And um, it is such a complicated disease. It's inside the brain. That, that, that's, that's a scary place for, for most people. And um, it's going to take a long time to come up with a so-called cure. But, but what is the cure? Is, is the cure... Um, wiping it away well we haven't wiped cancer and aids away so um i don't think that's the cure it might be earlier detection uh to to slow the path down and maybe that's what it looks like but for people like me we're on the train we're we're we ain't coming back and um but i'm in it for my kids and my grandkids and your kids and grandkids and anyone else who's listening because uh, i don't want that to happen to them well, Greg, I know you, you know, you're a very busy guy, which uh, is great. You're in meetings and so on, and I caught you between some of that. Let me just ask you finally uh, for maybe family or loved ones or for uh, folks who uh, have Alzheimer's, uh, what might be some uh, kind of final thoughts you might have uh, f for them to, to work through all of this? Well, I, I, I would say that um, if anyone uh, who's listening either it affects them or, or a family member. And they're, they're having issues um, that, and you could go online to look at the symptoms of the signs of Alzheimer's, 10 signs, I believe. And um, to go get a clinical test, but get a clinical test by, by an expert, not 
just the family doctor who are wonderful. My family doctor happens to be one of my best friends. And if it comes up problematic, dig deeper. And um, there are brain scans and, and, and PET scans and numerous other ways of diagnosing. But it's not the end of the world um, because there's still life to live because it's a disease that 20, 25, in some cases, 30 years it can take. And so if, if you just give up and lie down, lying down is a position of defeat. And um, on, on the lines of humor, it's one of my favorite um, uh, Bugs Bunny line, don't take life too seriously because nobody gets out alive. And why don't we all try to do some good on the way out? You know, the baby boom generation, uh, which is being impacted by this, we first played by the rules, broke the rules, made new rules. And, um, and then we became kind of involved in the establishment. And now as many of us are in our final laps, whatever it is, whether it's Alzheimer's or cancer or, or AIDS or whatever, that um, many are trying to become a little more idealistic and do some good things on the way out. So don't get distracted with the death part of Alzheimer's because we're all gonna die. It gives one an opportunity, if you look at opportunity in the, in the face of tragedy, to maybe do some good things that you wouldn't otherwise think about. Our guest, Thanks. Greg O'Brien, and his book, On Pluto, Inside the Mind of Alzheimer's, a second edition. We'll be right back. Thanks for joining us. Well, I uh, hope you liked the show, and I hope you learned a thing or two. The full show will be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. We have other shows coming up. Uh, with some really amazing guests, so we'd love it if you'd like it on Facebook and visit us at bloomerboomer.com. Till next time, so long.